What is up loud and proud crowd? Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fabulous. Yes, it is getting toasty. It is the tank season and I'm out here with the truck right now, the Mordecai 12 valve. We've got something today that we've got to get done and that is getting this turbo off because I'm about to be going out of town tomorrow and I need to get this done so that by the time I get back, all I have to do is bolt on the new HX35. If you watched the previous video, you guys know that well. If you listen here, this HX35, the bearings in there or something, I don't know. Something with the turbo is just, it's failing, it's going out. And therefore, the other day, it started making like a ticking metal on metal sound. And I wasn't sure, I thought it had something to do with turbo boost, stuff like that, because it was smoking more than it you know should, even though this smokes a lot, so it's hard to tell. But it was smoking more than it should, and something just didn't feel right, and it felt like a loss of power. So I called Devin, he said, check your turbo wheel on that factory old turbo. So I did, there's the problem. I did check the turbo wheel on this one as well, like I said in the other video, totally solid, no play, no slack up and down, side to side, in and out, like it's, it's a very snug, free spinning wheel, like it's very nice. This one, however, not so much, metal on metal contact, it's not good. So I limped it home in about a 10 minute drive from where it started making that noise, and we're getting this all ripped apart to get the new HX35 put in. Now the HX35 that I bought is a rebuilt whole set HX35. It is an actual turbo from one of these trucks that was completely gone through and rebuilt. And uh, that's just the way I wanted to go. It was a thousand dollar turbo for a core charge, which would bring it down to like 850 or something. But I just wanted to go that route because I didn't want to mess with trying to rebuild my own turbo with, with my wedding coming up, my honeymoon with my beautiful fiance, soon to be wife, Reagan. Just a lot going on. And so just me being able to take the time to do something like that just is not high on my priorities list above any of that other stuff. So I'd rather just you know, save some time, get a new turbo, send this one back. So that's what we're doing. Let's get to dismantling this. I already got uh, both of the nuts off of the back side of this turbo to be able to drop. And then I made a quick pit stop to Menards to buy one of these huge um, set of plier clamp. I don't even know what they're called. Doesn't even matter, whatever. Uh, the point is there's a clip on the back of this um, front cover of that turbo right there that I want to take off because I can't get to these other two nuts on there unless I take that off, which isn't really that big of a deal anyhow, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that popped off so I can get the two nuts off on the front side there, and then that turbo is going to be ready to drop out. This ain't something you usually have to do, removing a turbo, especially not an HX35, but one of those situations where you don't really have an option. Well, we got the front clip off. Now, if it'll just come off, that'd be great. I don't think there's anything else holding it on. Might just need a couple little love taps here. There we go. There we go. What I just did was pop the front cover off the turbo, the HX35, because I pretty much have to to be able to get to that, you know, front two bolts on that thing. So. Now I'm going to try to get the 15 mil wrench here and see if it'll get on there so I can actually try to break those loose. Let's see if we can get that turbo broke loose here. I'm thinking this should be the final stretch, but we're about to find out. When it comes to popping these turbos off though, it's pretty darn easy. Got that pile of junk out of there. You can check this out, watch this. Look at the slop in there, <laughs> holy crap. That's so bad. Let me get you guys a better look at this turbo here. So I had to take that front cover off of this thing to actually be able to get it out of the truck because of those two bolts, well nuts, same bolts, but two nuts on the front there. As soon as this started happening, like I heard the sound, as soon as it sounded different, and I hear and see a lot of stuff, like I noticed the little things, and as soon as I heard a little tick, 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 like real light, I'm talking like the most faint thing ever. As soon as I heard that, I'm like, cut off my AC and everything. I'm listening real close. Tick, 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 tick. I'm like, what the heck? And so instantly I just got it home, turned it off, caught, made a couple phone calls to try to figure out what the issue might be after checking and making sure all the, you know, boots, boot leaks weren't there. There was no transmission issue. Shipped it awesome, you know, perfect. And I'm like, what is going on? So then, like I said, Devin helped me out with that. But, um, Man, it, it, it can save you a lot of time and stress when you know people that can give you quick answers as to what problems might be so you don't have to spend 
too much money trying to figure them out. Pretty much all we need now is our refurbished slash rebuilt HX35. There's that old gasket. That's not going to go back on there, of course. My new turbo is going to come with a new gasket. <laughs> and then in terms of the gasket for that oil drain right here, which is just old, chewed up, nasty. I mean, it's it's pretty rough. I'm gonna get that cleaned up ahead of time so I don't have to do it when my new turbo gets here. But in terms of that one, you know, that's gonna come with a new gasket as well for that. So we're not gonna have to worry about that when that new turbo gets in here. But um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad of a job, guys, if I'm being honest. The only part that kind of sucked, which was yesterday, a couple days back for you guys now seeing it, but this whole freaking contraption here, I don't know what the heck that is. And I know why he put this whole big support bracket here, which was just added support for that big turbo. But this big turbo, guys, I've taken out all of this stuff, which by the way, I can move all this junk to show you a little bit more without this <laughs> blanket in the way. But in terms of that big turbo, it still hasn't moved. I got that all that support brackets out. I got the other turbo out. I got the exhaust part that goes from that turbo to the back to bolt up here to hold it, which is supposed to be, you know, pretty much um, a helping support bracket too. And everything off, and this thing is still, like it hasn't moved. Like it's still sturdy and rock solid right where it's at. Like it hasn't budged. So I don't know really if that entire thing is necessary. Leave your comments down in the comments below. I don't know if that entire thing is necessary or if I can just leave one of them on there and just do that. Because honestly, this one thing took forever to get back in the truck and it was a pain in the freaking rear end. And I'm sure he was just trying to overbuild it to make sure he's better safe than sorry because those big turbos are freaking, I mean, they're not, he ain't messing around, they're thinking heavy. But um, honestly, just the one up top that runs from here to your manifold, which helps tie that together to hold this propped up closer, pulled it closer to the engine. Honestly, I think that one alone is probably fine. I don't think the one that goes way down there behind the filter is really that necessary, if I'm being honest. So, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Let me know in the comments below. Should I cut just that lower bracket off, make it look clean, resand it and paint it like it was never there and just have the one that ties it from here to there? Because like I said, guys, it's still like, this thing still will not move and I've taken all those brackets and everything off and it's still solid. I mean, I don't know what else he's got under there to hold it or support it, but I mean, it's not moving anywhere. But anyways, let me know because honestly, Whoever gets this truck, if I put that bracket back on and you have to end up taking a turbo out or you want to build something or swap out the manifold or whatever, it's going to make your job a heck of a lot more difficult if I leave that bracket on there. But it's up to you guys. Leave it in the comment section below. Do not forget, guys, that you can enter to win this truck and put it in your own driveway. Every $15 you spend using the link in the description below on Loud and Proud merch, whether it's shirts, hats, hoodies, keychains, decals, uh, you know, whatever, beanies, every $15 more you spend gets you another entry to win this truck, and it could be yours within just a couple of weeks. So keep that in mind, enter while you can. It's a beautiful truck, and it could be yours. They did take the cover that was on that HX35, since it's the color that matches everything under the hood, and I took an airbrush to it, and I blew all the little tiny little dust and stuff that was inside there, and any possible little metal shavings, like real fine stuff that was in there. And then I took a towel and I wiped everything down and cleaned it all up so I can reuse it on that um, turbo that I'm going to get. Now, the video I'm about to make, the dumbest questions I've got on Facebook Marketplace. Now, you guys might think, well, dude, you're on Facebook. That's where all the dumb stuff happens. And if you're people that um, post stuff or make really dumb comments in Facebook Marketplace asking questions, I'm not saying you're dumb either or they're stupid people. I'm just saying the questions are just hilarious, especially when everything is listed there. Like you can't miss the details and I make sure there are no details that you could be missing out on. The things that I list, literally I put everything down. Eight lugs, six by 0.50 inch spacing. And then like I'll do all that stuff, like stuff that you shouldn't have to even do because you'd be like, okay dude, if you're looking to buy wheels and tires and that, you know what you're looking for, right? You'd be surprised. So this isn't everybody on Facebook Marketplace, but there are some questions that I get, holy smoke. So I had these dually wheels for sale, these giant eight on six five, negative 265 offset 
dually wheels that I bought for my 2019 fifth gen that I didn't end up using because it's an 8x200. I got this guy that asked this question, funniest crap ever, right? He said, hey, will these wheels fit my 2006 Sierra 2500? First off, he doesn't know his bolt pattern. Second off, they're dually wheels, dude. Like they, it says dually wheels, inner and outer set, full rear set of wheels, tires not included. Like it is spelled out, like dually wheels. And this guy asked this question. What's another one? Um, ha, here's another question. I'm not gonna, actually, I was gonna show you the con, the message, but I want you to see his first and last name. It says, well, these wheels, these wheels being these, right? The Mordecai 12 valves, you know, previous set of eight on six, five XD series wheels. He said, hello, I'm interested. Will these fit my six lug 05 Z71 Chevy? Now, I don't know if it's just GM people in general that don't know anything about what they drive. Some of this stuff is really funny. I should tell them, well, if you buy adapters, they'll fit. But guys, those are just a couple of questions that I thought were freaking hilarious because like there are seriously people out there, but, like I could sell these to a guy with the Sierra and he would not have ever checked these until he went to bolt them on in the truck and he would not know any difference. He's like, will an eight lug fit my six lug? No, it will not fit your six lug, dude. Like, I'm sorry. I do have something else for you guys. We also have some stuff coming in for the 92 first gen, the white one. That one's actually my one of my dad's trucks that he's had sitting for quite some time. It's actually just sitting um, in storage pretty much. But we actually got some Anthem wheels on the way for that truck. So comment down below, what wheels do you think we went with for that first gen? Did we go chrome? Did we go black? Did we go two-tone? What did we do? This guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to enter to win this truck. And think about it, maybe you didn't want to enter before, but maybe you do now because the value of this truck just went up about five grand by putting these wheels and tires on here. And I gotta tell you, they look really, really good and I'm super freaking satisfied with the way this truck's turning out. And like I said, this stupid little turbo thing, turbo's out, new one's gonna be here in like a day or two. All we have to do is basically bolt it back up in, put the little piping kit back on, truck runs like new. Actually, it'll probably run better since it's got a brand new turbo in it. Anyways guys, thank you so much for all the love and support. Enter to win this truck while you can, because I got a honeymoon to pay for it. And like I said, guys, when you're winning necessarily this truck, I don't know who wouldn't want this truck. It's freaking amazing. But if for some reason you don't like the most mint and clean and pristine second gens on the planet, and maybe you guys want something not as cool like a Ford or a Chevy, totally joking, this truck would bring a very pretty penny. So just think about that. Maybe you need some money to pay off some bills. Maybe you got to put yourself through school or you gotta pay some loans off from making the mistake of going to school. Whatever the case may be, you can do whatever it is that you want with this truck. I would prefer you keep it because it's cool, it's one of a kind. Finding a truck like this is gonna be really hard to do ever again unless you search night and day and you're willing to pay really, really top dollar. But a truck like this, it's worth quite a bit. It's a hard to find truck. Leave a fat thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.